Hello, and thank you very much to Scotland's Climate Assembly for inviting Transform Scotland to give evidence today. I am Matt MacDonald. I am the Communications Officer for Transform Scotland, and it's a pleasure to be with you all today. We are Scotland's Alliance for Sustainable Transport, so we campaign for walking, cycling and public transport to be the easiest and most affordable options for everyone. Our diverse membership brings together around 60 public, private and third sector organisations from all across Scotland. So today I'm going to talk about three key points. First, Scotland's transport emission problem. Next, the necessary recent progress made on committing to the decarbonisation of public transport and the support for active travel. And finally, the high carbon infrastructure spending that undermines any other progress on transport emission reduction. So transport is the largest source of emissions in Scotland, accounting for 36% of the total. There has also been no progress in emission reduction over the last 30 years. So while other sectors have decarbonised, transport emissions have remained steady. This tells us transport hasn't been pulling its weight and that other sectors have had to take up the burden as a consequence. On to the specifics of why that's happened and starting with some good news. Since the climate emergency declaration in 2019, there's been a number of welcome commitments made to decarbonising public transport and to making conditions for active travel better. To give you a few examples, in September 2019, the Scottish Government committed £500 million for more bus lanes, and in July last year, we welcomed the commitment to electrify the railway by 2035. And then in December of 2020, the updated climate change plan committed to building active freeways. These will link up major towns, cities and landmarks with segregated walking and cycling routes. However necessary and encouraging these commitments have been, these changes alone will not be sufficient to cut emissions from the transport sector. The amount of money spent on these projects pales in comparison to the huge road building plans that still exist in Scotland and which will lock us in for future emissions from unsustainable transport for years to come. Scotland's infrastructure priorities have long been the biggest barrier to emission reduction in the transport sector. In 2018, the Scottish Parliament published research that found the Scottish Government's future infrastructure spending plans are heavily skewed towards high carbon infrastructure. In transport, this is predominantly made up of the huge road building programme the Scottish Government continues to pursue. Given that 30% of Scottish households do not have access to a car, this spending is not only environmentally disastrous, it is also compounding inequalities. Now, while the UK government is increasingly being brought under scrutiny for its £27 billion road building programme, our own government has road spending plans that are vastly more expensive per capita than anything seen in England. The most significant investments are the unnecessary duelling of the A9 and A96, which will cost at least £6 billion by the time they are complete. These numbers alone dwarf the spending on active travel and public transport promised in the climate change plan and do not even include the other numerous large-scale road building projects currently going on. All of this is while the government is not fixing our current road network, which has a £2 billion maintenance backlog. Fixing local roads would help not only car users, but also pedestrians, cyclists and bus users. Now, while the Scottish government continues to prioritise high carbon over low carbon infrastructure investments, we will not see the necessary reduction in emissions from the transport sector to meet our net zero targets. Advice from experts has consistently identified infrastructure investment as a crucial issue for the Scottish Government to address in order to reduce transport emissions. The Just Transition Commission and Infrastructure Commission have both recently published reports calling for changes in infrastructure investment. We are, however, yet to see any progress on this critical issue. So to summarise our evidence today, transport remains Scotland's most problematic sector and progress on reducing emissions is non-existent. The recent commitments on active travel and public transport decarbonisation are necessary, but alone are not sufficient. And infrastructure spending plans focused on road building will lock us into unequal and unjust future high emissions as the car continues to dominate transport spending in Scotland. Unless this imbalance is urgently addressed. Thank you very much for your time.